to Ecoholics. Today we are going to solve a question which had arrived in the previous year paper of UGC net examination of paper 1. Uh, there is a section which is known as logical reasoning and in logical reasoning we have a variety of fundas, variety of concepts which are common to not just UGC net examination but also to a variety of competitive examinations where general aptitude and logical reasoning is a part of. So, today we are going to solve some question related to fallacy. Fallacy is a concept or is a concept related to logical reasoning where we solve questions on the basis of pure logic and we try to find out some anomalies. Okay, so we try to find out some illogical conclusions that might have resulted from whatever conclusion we have come out with. So today we are going to solve one question or one concept which is the existential fallacy. This video will entail the concept of existential fallacy along with few examples of existential fallacy so that whenever you attempt a question related to logical reasoning, you will understand whether or not the conclusion is a proper conclusion or a valid conclusion or is a fallacy. Now when we talk about the existential fallacy, it occurs when we erroneously, by mistake, suppose some class or group has members. Now, what does this mean? This does not sound very um, correct or we don't, we don't um, understand what exactly the statement means. Now, this is the definition. So, now let's understand the meaning of it. While we understand the meaning of it, let's understand what we are talking about. So, statements may be true about a certain class or a certain group which basically is a subject or a predicate in a sentence and even if no members of the class or the group exist at that time also the premise will be true. However, we cannot say the same thing about the conclusion. Again, this is very hard to understand. So, let's jump on to the example that we have. Now, we have a very simple example to this. Actually, there are two examples to this. Okay. So, the very first, I will mark this as the first example and this is your second example. So, now let's look at the first example. There is, let's say, given an argument. Okay. Every unicorn has a horn on its forehead. Let's assume Every unicorn has a horn on its forehead. Now, when we logically derive such a statement, we need to also understand whether that element exists on the planet where we live or not. Obviously, something like a unicorn is an imaginary figure, is an imaginary animal. And which is why if we say every unicorn is a mammal, one unicorn is a mammal or some unicorns are mammals. All of these statements will contain certain type of fallacies because the existence of unicorn is doubtful because unicorn does not exist in the reality. Now, let's take another example to understand the same thing. All trespassers will be prosecuted. Let's take these two statements as two arguments. Okay, so this is argument number one and this is argument number two. All trespassers will be prosecuted, which basically means that if there is, uh, imagine that there is a big villa, big house and uh, they have maintained a beautiful garden and they will stick a plate in front of the, their door and they'll say that all trespassers are going to be prosecuted, which means legal action is going to be taken if you, you are found trespassing in their lawn or in their house. Now, of course, for safety reasons, we always stick a nameplate or stick a plate related to this. However, there's also a second thing, second statement, which is a conclusion. Now, what does the conclusion say? All trespassers will be prosecuted. Therefore, some of those who are prosecuted will be trespassers. 
Now let's find out logically by drawing a Venn diagram. Now how will we draw a Venn diagram for prosecuted and trespassers? So let's make it simple. We'll call them A and B. Okay. So we'll call the subject. So here we have the subject. The trespassers will be the subject. So let's say this is A and prosecuted is the predicate. So let's say this is B. Okay. Now Let's start with our Venn diagram, okay? So the first argument says all A will be B. I'm writing in the same sequence, in the same sentence so that you understand it, okay? Then secondly, some, some of those prosecuted, which means some B, some B, will be A. Now we have to find out what's the fallacy in this. Usually what happens when we have a question or a, a, a syllogism argument which goes like all A are B. Okay. So in conclusion, you can write two things. What you can write is because all A are B, some A are B and some B are A. This is usually true. However, over here we have to also understand the existential fallacy. Now what's the existential fallacy over here? They have clearly mentioned that only those who are trespassing, only those are going to be prosecuted, which means all those who are trespassing, it only relates to those people and only they will be prosecuted only on them some legal action will be taken. We cannot conclude in this way that all those who are prosecuted usually trespass. That's not true. The prosecuted can have some uh, can uh, can be victims also of certain other crimes or the prosecuted can be criminals who, who have never trespassed around any house. So, which is why the conclusion here is not valid. Even though we have a sequence of syllogism where we know that there is a validity of uh, conclusions for the universal positive statement. Still, because of the existential fallacy, because presently, at present, there are no trespassers. So only when the existence of trespassers will be there, only then they will be prosecuted. So over here we have a barrier. What's the barrier? The barrier is that the trespassers should be there to be prosecuted. Unless the trespassers are not, not there, we cannot generalize the conclusion. Similar to the unicorn concept or unicorn example. It's a very famous example. Uh, why is it famous example? Because we by looking just at a specific concept or a specific argument, we cannot generalize it. Okay. Otherwise, there will be an existential fallacy. We say that all unicorns have horns on their heads. However, it depends on the unicorn's existence. I can also say that all dinosaurs can fly. But for that, I relatively want the dinosaurs to exist. And so that I will know that, yes, all those uh, dinosaurs are able to fly. Right? So this is an existential fallacy. Of course, there are limited examples to such fallacies. However, you can always imagine all those uh, creatures or anything that does not exist presently. And according to that, you can derive a certain argument and make some conclusion just so that you can practice such fallacies, right? So th this was it for this part of the video. There are many such videos where we are going to discuss various other types of fallacies. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel, Ecoholics. Thank you.